Hello, my name is Chris Hammond with .NET New Corporation. In this video, part two of our installation series for DNN 7, I'm going to talk to you about the IIS, or the web server configuration for .NET Nuke. Now in our first video, we went through and we configured our file system. If you haven't watched that video, feel free to go ahead and click on the link here within the video and check that first video out, and then come back to this one. After this video in the series, we're going to have another video on how to create the database and configure the permissions for the database. And then the fourth and final video in the series will be for the installation wizard. The steps we're going to perform in this video in order to set up our web server, we're going to create a website pointing to the domain dnndev.me. We're going to need to make sure that the application pool for that website is running under the .NET 4.0 framework. And we're going to point the website to the local folder where we have the files for our .NET Nuke installation. That's the folder we configured in the previous video. Now after we set up the website, we'll have to take the name of the application pool, or the identity for the application pool, and we need to configure the permissions on that folder. The name we'll be using is IIS space app pool backslash dnndev.me. So let's go ahead and load up IIS. To load IIS on your computer, you can go ahead and type in INET MGR into the run window from your start menu. That will load up the IIS manager. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to go into the manager, we're going to expand the nodes on the left into the sites node. We're going to right click on sites, we're going to choose add website. Here we're going to type in the name of our website, in our case it's going to be dnndev.me. We need to point to a physical location on the hard drive, and we'll point to that C colon backslash websites backslash dnndev.me. Down below, we need to provide a host name, and we'll go ahead and provide www.dnndev.me as the host name. From here, we can go ahead and click on OK, and that will create a new website here in IIS for that particular domain. Now before we do anything else, we want to go ahead and click on the Application Pools node within the menu, and we'll find a dnndev.me application pool. And we can see here that it is running under version 2.0 of the .NET framework. So we need to go ahead and change that. We can do that by right-clicking on the application pool, choosing Basic Settings, and then choosing from the drop-down list, choosing 4.0. From here, we'll go ahead and click OK. And that will configure the application pool to run under the .NET 4.0 framework. So the next step, now that we've configured the website, is to actually configure the file system permissions on the folder where the website exists. So we're going to navigate over to our websites folder on the C drive. Now you would navigate to wherever you have the installation files for .NET Nuke. We're going to right click on that folder and choose properties. This will bring up our properties for the folder. We're going to then click on the security tab. Now within the security tab, we want to click on the edit button and then we're going to click on the Add button. Here we have the ability to type in a name of an account that we want to configure permissions for. Before we type in the name though, you should check the Locations option. Right now mine says dnncorp.local, that is our local Active Directory domain. So I want to change the location, I'm going to click on the Locations button, and for our location we're going to choose our computer name, in my case that is dnn-pc34. So I'm going to select that and then click OK. The reason we're doing this is we're configuring a local account, not a domain account. If you are not part of a domain, then your local computer name would have probably already been selected. Now from here, I'm going to come into the text box at the bottom and type in IIS space app pool backslash dnndev.me. You can go ahead and click on check names. If it finds the account, it will underline it and then I can go ahead and click on OK. From here I want to go ahead and give the user that dnndev.me which is selected above at least modify permissions. You can also check the full control allow column if you would like. You have to at minimum check the modify column. From here we'll go ahead and click apply, click OK, OK, We've now configured the permissions as well as the web server for our .NET Nuke installation. Now in the next video in the series, we're going to go through the process of creating that database. 
with that new database, we'll then be able to go into the installation wizard for .NET Nuke and actually configure our .NET Nuke installation. I'd encourage you to check out those other videos in the series, as well as additional videos in the .NET Nuke video library.